Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'll show you how you can use Python and Cassandra together in your computer. We're going to use Docker to spin up a Cassandra instance. Then I'm going to show you what Python package you can use to talk to Cassandra. I'm going to show you how you can connect to the locally, locally running Cassandra cluster. And once we're connected, we're going to take two ways we can read data. One is going to be a simple way to read it. Another is going to be more performant. And finally, we're going to take a look at how we can write to Cassandra, both synchronously and asynchronously. So with that being said, let's get started. The first thing you have over here is how do you spin up Cassandra in a Docker container? So for that, you need a very simple Docker command. So all you can do is do a Docker run and then you give it a name. Let's call our one test Cassandra V2. And then you want to give it the port. So it's 9042, 9042. By default, Cassandra spins up in 9042 in the container. So you want to expose that 9042 port to your local computer so that you can talk to it using the Python program. If you don't expose the port like this, what's going to happen is when you try to connect to the Cassandra node, it's going to say connection refused because by default, the ports inside a Docker container is not exposed to your local machine. All right, so this is a very simple command you can use to run the Cassandra node locally. So I'm going to show you over here, I have it running already and you can see I have it running in port 9042. So I'm not running the command, but if you have Docker installed, just running this should do the same thing for you. So we know what command, uh, how to use Docker. The next one is going to be what package we're going to be using. The package we're going to be using is called, you're going to do a pip3 install Cassandra driver. So this is the Python package you can use. Uh, I already have the package installed, but you can just go ahead and run this command and this is gonna install the package for you. All right, so that being said, now we know how to, how to spin up a Cassandra node locally and how and which uh, Python package you're gonna use to talk to Cassandra. The next step is gonna be connecting to the Cassandra cluster. So let's start doing that, right? So at first you want to import the package. We want to do cassandra.cluster and then you want to import the cluster class. And then from there you instantiate the cluster class. And when doing it, you have to give it up uh, the node that it's running on. So in our case, it's running locally. So we're going to do 0.0.0.0. .0, .0, 0, .0. And then you give it the port. Uh, and in our case, it's going to be 9042. All right, so this is going to create a cluster object. And now you want to connect to that cluster. To do that, you have to do, let's just do a session object. And then you can do a cluster.connect. And then you give it the key space that you have. Key space in Cassandra is the same as a database in MySQL. So I, I already went ahead and created a key space called employee. So let's take a look at this key space, right? So if I look over here, I have a SQL, uh, 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 Cassandra shell over here. So I can do use employee. This is going to switch me to the employee key space. And then let's do select star from the table. I already have a table created called employee details. So we're going to just do a select star. I'll try to zoom in. There you go. So a select star from employee details. Uh, this gives me all the data that I have in the table right now, which is four rows. Each row has an ID, age, city, and name. So yeah, we we're connecting to the employee key space because as you can see, the employee details table is in the employee key space. All right, so this is how you connect to a particular key space in your Cassandra cluster. One thing to note, if you don't have the key space created beforehand, you will get an error. So you want to go ahead and create your key space and then try connecting to it. 
All right, so we're done connecting to the cluster. The next thing is going to be how we can read data from the table. So as we saw here, our table employee details has four rows in it. So let's try to read them. The first one is going to be reading it very simply. So we could do read simple. So all you do, we're going to have a print statement here that says reading data simply. And then we have variable rows and all you have to do is session, the session you just created over here. And then you do dot execute. And within the parentheses, you give it the query. So in our case, we're going to do a select star from employee details. That's going to be our query. This should run the query for you as you're doing that execute. So now let's print out the result. We can do for employee row in rows. And then we just print it out, right? All right, uh, let's see how that works. So we're gonna do Python 3 demo. And over here, you can see we get one, two, three, and four. We get four rows with all the data. Uh, to access the data, this is pretty much a named tuple. So you can just access the data using the dot notation. So you could theoretically do for every row, print the, uh, let's do print the name and then print the age. Right, if we do something like that, you're only getting the name and the age. All right, so that's how you read data very simply. It's literally three lines of code and you can just uh, pull data from Cassandra. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and delete this and then we're going to look at the read performant. This is going to be a more performant version of it, right? So that is the concept of prepared statement. So I'm going to go through this in a bit. So for a prepared statement, what you want to do is session dot prepare and then let's give it a query. Uh, let's do boy details where ID equals question mark. All right, so let me just run through this. So let's say you have a scenario where you want to run this query for multiple IDs. So ID one, two, three, multiple of them. So one way to do it is of course, to just do that session dot execute instead of a dot prepare and then give ID equals one or two. But the problem with that is if you have 10 or 20 times that you have to run that query, Cassandra will have to interpret this statement 20, 30 times. Instead, to make it more performant, you can do a dot prepare statement. What that does is Cassandra pre prepares this statement to be executed. And then in runtime, instead of parsing the whole statement every single time, it just substitutes the question mark with your ID. So both in terms of network bandwidth and speed, this is going to be quicker rather than doing session.execute 20 times for the same query with 20 different IDs. All right. So that's how it's more performant. So yeah, we have, this is called a prepared statement. So we have the prepared statement over here and the only part of the query that's going to be changing, which is our value of the ID, you can put a question mark and that's the wildcard kind of uh, notation that tells Cassandra that I'm going to be dynamically changing this. All right, so we have the prepared statement and then let's have employees to look up and we're going to, let's say we're going to look at one and two. These are the IDs, right? Now what you could do is you could do for employee ID in employee to look up. So for each of the ID, you could do employee equals session that execute. So the, now this is where you're executing the query, but differently because we're going to use the prepared statement. So you do dot execute and then you give it the prepared statement. And then the next one is going to be all the parameters, right? So in our case, we have only one parameter, which is the employee ID. So what that means is employee ID is going to be one and two for this query. The first time it's going to be ID equals one. The second time it's going to be ID equals two. 
uh, and dot execute using a prepared statement does not give you the row immediately. So you would have to do something like uh, dot one. This is gonna give you that one row of data. And then I could just print it out, right? So now let's run it again. Over here, you see, we get ID one and ID two. We don't get the other ones that we had in the database. So we don't get 99 and 400. So hopefully that explains how you can read in a more performant manner if you have a use case like this one. But if not, then you can use the previous one I showed where we have a more simple read. All right, so we looked at both ways of reading. Now let's look at two ways you can write. One is synchronously, one is asynchronously. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this. All right, and then we're gonna do write simple, uh, sorry, write sync. Right, so we're gonna write synchronously. So super, super simple. All you do is session dot execute. By default, it's gonna be a synchronous one. And then you give it the statement. So in our case, it's gonna be insert into employee details. We're gonna give it all the columns and the values, right? Uh, so ID, let's say we do uh, 777 and then age, we're going to do, let's say 45 and uh, for city, we can just do Chicago. So Chicago, the city is a string, right? It's a text. So you want to give it the uh, quote Chicago. And then for name, let's just do, uh, I don't know, let's just do Tyson. All right, and then we have our uh, semicolon. All right, so let's run this. All right, so this ran successfully. Let's go to a table and do a uh, select star again. And now you see we have Chicago, uh, uh, Tyson, age and ID over here, All right? So super straightforward to write yeah, synchronously. Similarly, you can also write asynchronously if you have an application that is very write intensive. Uh, Cassandra recommends just writing asynchronously and moving on with your work rather than waiting uh, for a synchronous process. So we're going to do write async. All you have to do is just to execute async. Other than that, it's the exact same thing. So I'm going to copy over our query over here there you go so we're going to copy over our query and then let's just change the values we're going to do let's say 555 it's going to be 30. Uh, let's do it as seattle and for the name let's put uh i don't know whatever we can just go with ash all right and i'm going to comment out the previous execute Okay, and this should run. There you go. And we see Ash over here. So it's very quick. So even though if you're doing asynch asynchronously, the write is going to be very fast. So you don't have to wait too long or anything just because you're doing it asynchronously. All right, so hopefully that was helpful. Uh, so we went over how we're going to connect to the Cassandra cluster. We went over how you can read both simply and more in, in a more performant manner. And then we took a look at two ways you can write uh, into the Cassandra database. And at the beginning, we saw how you can be running it with Docker. One reminder about the Docker command, you wanna make sure you define the port and you expose it to your computer. Otherwise, uh, you can't talk to the Docker container. It's gonna give you connection refused. All right, so hopefully that was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions or concerns. I'm gonna go ahead and link the code in the description. So feel free to take a look at it if you're still confused. Uh, and of course, if you have questions, just let me uh, know in the comments. So yeah, with that being said, hope you all have a good rest of the day and I'll catch y'all later, bye-bye.